Today is the second Sunday of Easter and Divine Mercy Sunday. This morning our Mass is offered for Mr. and Mrs. Michael Galvez. Rest in peace to Krishna Brahmi Krasnodavsky, who entered his internal rest this past week. This week's second collection will be for the building fund. The Easter Flower Memorial list can be found in the rear of the church and on the parish website. Help is needed next Saturday at April 17th in the Carroll Street parking lot to help paint parking spaces. Please call the rectory or see Jack Kentner for more information. There will be a meeting on Wednesday, April 21st at 6.30 in the church to discuss possible parish practices. New faces are always welcome. Following the fundraiser meeting on Wednesday, the 21st, Around 7.15, there will be a meeting for anyone who wishes to help plan liturgical services for the diocesan year of the real presence. And those who are qualified, please remember to get your COVID-19 vaccine shot. We need to see you in the pews. Please pray with me the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God renew you and humbly pray, and do thou all the things that have the heart, and the power of God, cast it in thy saving, and all the evil spirits who cry out of the world, seeking the good of souls. Amen. Please rise to greet Father Bill by singing our entrance at number 434. Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. Give number 434.
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what bond they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. 
The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with me, you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. He said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the door was locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have not seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord.
Didymus means twin. I don't know if that's Siamese twins, fraternal twins, Irish twins. I don't know what that is. But Thomas has a twin. And I'd like to believe that you and I are Thomas' twin. Because there's times in our lives where we doubt. There's times in our life when we lose faith, when we lose hope. And we have to see the wounds. You know, when you go into that hospital room and your loved one wants to show you their bowel scars from surgery, they want you to be able to excel, to share in the experience of what they went through. And when we say, oh, cover yourself up, we're kind of in denial that that ever happened. You know, as a child, and maybe even as a young adult, I always look forward to the resurrection of Jesus in my own life. But I always deny, like Thomas, the seeing of the wounds. I wanted Jesus to be made whole once again, the way that he was before they crucified him. But it was those wounds, those hardships, those challenges that defined him, that made him truly, really present in our life. And when we know of someone who endures and overcomes a horrendous accident, or an illness, or a surgery, we say, what a strong person they are. And we support them and we love them. Doubt will always be a part of our lives, but so will Jesus. And so we must always truly understand and live in the present moment, in the real moment. Doubts can be fantasies. <laughs> Doubts can be hypothetical. Doubts can be lies and unreal. But Jesus is truly real. He gives us his own body and blood, his woundedness, to restore us to holiness. Forgive us our sins. Let us know that no sin, no sin, is ever unforgivable in his eyes. As long as we do our best to believe in him. And so today as we celebrate this divine mercy Sunday, we are given Christ's peace, Christ's love, Christ's mercy. We ask the Lord, as we say, my Lord and my God, to recognize the great power and love that God has for each of us. And by His wounds, we are true. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. Father, God, light from God, 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 not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was the Holy Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified.
died and purchased by it. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. As witnesses of the resurrection, the apostles were sent forth to continue the work of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray for the mission of the church and the needs of the world. That led by the successors of Peter and the apostles, the church will boldly proclaim the truth of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who guide the economy of nations will distribute resources fairly among all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people weighed down by guilt may find pardon and peace in the divine mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our working week will be transformed by the joy of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and bereaved of our parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the risen Christ will bring the dead to share in his victory, especially Mr. and Mrs. Michael Gabalas. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As your people continue the work of the apostolic witnesses, we beseech you, Lord, most merciful Father, to grant our petitions through Christ our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please join in our number 439, all of the number five, number 439.
Therefore, overcome with possible joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Resurrection. 
your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us. This pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, that they may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant great mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, we sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the
and all the for all that died for the name of mercy. For those that are now and for those Go in 